counterproductive anyways. Yeah. Okay. But now it's done. Now it's done. Mm -hmm. Alright. Um, so we're going to be working with Jesse. Uh, Jesse had a pretty bad um, motorcycle accident a couple years back. Uh, he got his clavicle, his... Um, what else, Jesse? Uh, the whole left shoulder completely reconstructed. Seven thoracic fractures, eight broken ribs, collapsed both lungs, so scar tissue all over the place. Oh, Spines man. fused. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. We're gonna try to get him as close to Symmetrico as possible. Jesse does bodybuilding shows. Um, as a matter of fact, that's his last, that's your last show you did, right? Uh, second to last, last show. Second that last was show. November 18th. He does a good job of finding it. Okay. So let's, let's have you face up first, Jesse. So right now I'm working on his pec, uh, just so that way we can get some more range of motion or uh, more oxygen in here when I start working further down to his attachments in his rotator cuff, his bicep, tricep, and again, his lats. I'm gonna strip his uh, bicep, I already did it once, I'm gonna do it the second time. Don't flex on me, bro, don't flex on me. And go ahead, go down. It's basically, it's like, uh, I think I've, I explained that before. It's basically like uh, getting the toothpaste and squeezing all the juice out of it. Getting all that knots and those adhesions out. It's been a long time since I worked on Jesse. Mm -hmm. It usually goes to Lisa. So I'm working, a lot of you guys don't know this, your forearms, you use these things every single day, especially if you work out, you're constantly gripping that bar. Um, you don't get enough stimulation in here. So this scar tissue tends to build up. And then when we start working on it, I mean, look at his body language when we start getting there and start tearing up some of that tissue. It's not stimulated enough. Then it affects your wrist. It affects your, uh, affects your, uh, affect <laughs> your elbow. Um, so we're gonna start beating the shit out of his uh, forearms right now. So I want you to open and close your fist. Exaggerate the movements. Go a little bit more. Oh, motherfucker. That is uh, an active release technique, ART. It's having them actively move the muscle uh, while I pin it down and force blood and oxygen through there. It's great for opening up the muscle. Hurts like hell, though. Go ahead, take it up and take it back down. That's where we start stripping the muscle. Go back up, go back down. Right now, just tracing the muscle, see if I find any inconsistencies throughout the muscle, get into the joint, right in here, it's kind of tight. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, break some of that down. Right here on his lat, or his serratus, is where I'll, I'll kind of map this out uh, just to get some more uh, stimulation through it. And just to keep remind that muscle that it has to constantly work. So this technique is called mapping. It hurts like hell, but it does tremendous things for your body. Um, it creates blood flow, oxygen. It brings up some of the toxins that your body doesn't really need. You drink a lot of water, it flushes it out. Um, and then it stimulates the muscle. So if you have a lot of atrophied muscles, which means the muscle goes to sleep, uh, that same is true. If you don't use it, you will lose it. And that's where atrophy comes in. This will wake up the muscle and um, you can start utilizing the muscle and then you retrain yourself how to use the muscle correctly. Some people are different. Some people it'll take a little bit longer to get some blood flow through here. He's already getting a nice blood flow through here. Also, he's gonna have a lot of toxins come up quickly just because he hasn't gotten manual work done in a little while. And he drinks. <laughs> and he drinks a lot, you heard it guys. Drinking a lot, just like getting tattoos, you will know. You drink a lot, your blood gets thin, you start to bleed more during a tattoo, 
you drink a lot, your skin's gonna look even redder or darker than this, just because of the amount of toxins you have in your body. Oh, yep. I'm getting right here, because remember that lac comes all the way down and it attaches to your serratus. So I'm getting all in here. Skin looks ugly, but when he starts to flex and when he starts to work this out, he's gonna notice everything pop, everything working. As you can see the whole difference, yeah. the whole Yeah, you can line. see all the blood, and it, this didn't take long at all. It took, this whole mat and everything out probably took two to three minutes, and I got all this blood in here, so when he goes back to the gym, he's gonna notice, and we're gonna do the same thing on this side, but he's gonna notice a huge activation on this side. Mm -hmm. This one I'm gonna focus a lot more. <laughs> Is that like a burning, pinching? Mm, pulling, like pulling? on the tendon. It feels like it's pulling on the acromium ligament. Okay. Um, a lot of people have this issue right here. It's not gonna be as, as, as uh, advanced as Jesse's, but a lot of people have this, this little tendon, it's called your bicep brachii tendon. It's uh, from the long head of your bicep, it's a little tendon that goes into your humerus and it sits in a crevice right in here. A lot of times if you don't utilize your, um, the muscles back here or the muscles up here, that tendon will pop out depending on what side is weaker. So. Let's say your back side is weaker, that tendon will pop out and come up to the front side because all this muscle is pulling this way and vice versa the other way. So when you start lifting your shoulder up, everything contracts and this tendon right here, when you come up this way, it pinches the muscle because the muscle is constricting, it pinches that tendon and you get a sharp burning pain when you lift up your arm. Vice versa, the same way the other side. So you'll get a burning pain shooting down this way. Um, and all that has to happen, all that has to really happen is we just have to wake up this muscle back here, these muscles or these muscles, and then manipulate that bicep brachii I tend it back in. So that way it falls back into that humerus, that little crevice. Uh, and then you have full range of muscle or, or motion. But the hardest part or the most important part is to retrain that muscle to be used because if it doesn't get reused again, that muscle is just going to, or that bicep brachii I tend it's just going to pop back out. Super easy, but somewhat complicated. You just have to understand your body to, to fix yourself. Another cool thing is, well, not so cool, is if you don't get that fixed and then you start to limit your range of motion, that's how frozen shoulder starts. Because you don't, you forget how to use these muscles, you only get to a certain point and then that just, your muscles don't know how to go any further. And that's how the whole pain train starts. So, Pain is good because it that's your body telling you that something's wrong. Listen to your body. Okay, this is gonna suck for him a little bit just because I have to move his arm past that point of pain. Now again, that muscle supposed to, or your, you're supposed to be able to go this far. The majority of the time when you have somebody go back here, they can't get there. So this is more of a stretch and I'm paying another uh, ART technique, paying the muscle down and forcing it to come up. This one might suck a little bit more. Now we have to be very careful when we work in here. There's this little bursa. bursar sac. That's exactly what it's called. It's a bursar sac and it's a little connection or highway where the, the tendons meet and they sit right there with each other. If that gets inflamed, you are not gonna be happy and your client is gonna feel like shit. So be careful in there. You actually have a few bursar sacs here behind the knee. But it's good to stimulate it, but you don't want to overstimulate. Because then you cause pain. What you can do is put some cups right in here. Have them move around. That's another cool thing is if you feel like the muscle or the, uh, the nerve is being impinged, you can put some cups here and it'll lift it up. You can have them move and it, sometimes it can reset and put back in place doesn't fix the problem because a muscle usually pushed it out of where it needs to sit. This side he felt a little bit more because he's not stimulating this side, side enough because of the pain he's getting up here. Subconsciously he doesn't. Facts. Yeah. And he's left handed. So, so we're going to strip that one more time. Nice big deep breath. And go ahead. All the way down, all the way down. All right, relax. 
And if you guys can notice, I only do the movements two at the most three times just because you can overstimulate the muscle and cause more harm than good when you're working on it. So everything I have a rule of two and three. Three if it's being really stubborn. Take that elbow uh, to the ear. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go, 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 go. Slowly bring it back. <sighs> and relax. It's a great exercise to do, just because it opens up everything, the back, chest, everything. But you have to be very careful that you're not going into the armpit because there is a highway of nerves, arteries. There's a lot of things that you could fuck up in there. So you want to stay away from that area. But it's important to get right into the lat. Go ahead. Subscat. Subscat. And I'm pinning this down while he forces it up. And again, it's creating, oh. bring it back down. It's creating uh, mobility and breaking up scar tissue. That's one of the reasons why it sucks, because the scar tissue is breaking up. Okay, I want you to go ahead and move that shoulder around. How are we doing? Oh, yeah. Any pain? Mm, a hint. Okay. So, right here when the humerus is anteriorly rotated. Okay, we're going to map this out, and I'm pretty sure that's going to take away the pain altogether. Again, try to stay away from that bursar. Mm. Oh, <laughs> he likes the pecs being worked on. Mm. Where do you know the, where the bursters are? It's generally right in this area right here. Sometimes it'll come down to here, but it's generally right in here. I can feel it right there. It's just like, it feels like a little Super Bowl. That's what I like to call it, a little, or a grape. It feels like a little grape. It's squishy. You just get a feeling for it when you start working on people. Relax it. All right, move that arm around. Oh, yeah. No pain? Mm -hmm. Very little? Nope. None. Boom! Magic! Do you believe in magic? <laughs> All right, let's have you face down. It's like to put pressure right in here. Very controlled pressure. Then I'm gonna have Jesse lift his arm up just like this, but he's gonna go against my leg. Okay. And it's gonna help, uh, well, it's gonna do two things. It's gonna help uh, release some of the tension he's got in here. And then it's also gonna give me an idea wherever the pain starts to radiate, uh, where I need to work next. So if I'm getting the pain back here, I know this is where I gotta work. Um, if I'm getting pain up here, the, the, the rotator cuff just needs to be released a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, the front delt fired a little bit. Okay. Um, so with doing that work, or actually any work like that where you're putting a lot, because I put a good amount of pressure in there, and I'm having them uh, have the muscle activate against me. With anything like that, the pressure has to be very controlled. And then when he uh, releases the muscle, he has to do it very controlled, just because if he releases it, my arm falls right in there, and then possibly bruises or can snap something this is weak at all is if he's bringing his arm up and he starts to shake a lot that means muscle is not getting uh, as stimulated as it needs to get so we have to wake it up but he actually felt uh, pretty good you know, scars tissue how's it looking at the um it doesn't look bad i mean you can feel it how's it feeling to you it like shit like shit when you touch a healthy muscle, it should feel like a pillow. Yeah. It should feel like a pillow. It should feel nice, um, squishy. It should have some give to it. And no pain. And no pain, exactly. Uh, when, I, when I touch it, he shouldn't feel any pain. That's a nice, healthy muscle. It's getting enough oxygen. It's getting enough nutrition. It's being stimulated. When, like right down here, where he's got a tremendous amount of scar tissue, it's nice and fluffy, then it turns into a rock right in here. Um, and the only way you as a therapist or any kind of therapist is gonna know this is literally by, just by working on bodies. Cause I know for a fact when I get into here, his sacrum area, right around here where his um, PSISs are, which is little bones right in here, 
that's where it should start to get hard and then it should start build up right in here because this is where the coccyx comes in, your sacrum, now all that stuff. It's, it's kind of like a joint. Um, but right in here, this mm. is considered as QL. Mm. This, all this should be, have some give in there and there's not really any give. This table's coming apart. So, in this scenario, I'm gonna be very careful, but I'm just gonna place pressure right in this QL. And that's all I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna go in as much as a muscle will allow me to go in. I'm not gonna force it. Sometimes you might have to stay in this position for like a minute. I'm just going as much as the muscle will allow me to go. Like right now, it's, it's sinking in a little bit, which is a good thing, which means the muscle is responding to the, technically the trigger point, what I'm doing. Now, when I go over it, it's a little bit more stimulated. It actually feels really good to that individual too. It's like a, it's like a hurt, an itch that you, they haven't been able to get to. Especially because you guys all sit way too much, whether you're in a car, uh, at work, and even when you get home from work, let's say you work a nine to five and you're, you have an office job and you're sitting at a desk all day. You go home to relax and the first thing you do is go sit down on your couch or go lay on your bed, which is kind of perpetuating this whole cycle where these glutes aren't doing enough, so it sends it to your lower back. And the QL takes a huge, uh, load it takes all that work and it decides to do it itself again if you don't use it you lose it so that feels better but you have this thing what's called a cross kinetic chain which means this glute dictates what this back does and vice versa so you have this little glute minor right in here if that glute minor decides not to work it sends all the work to its ql and that's why you guys have lower back pain then sciatic becomes an issue, then knee problems, then hip pains. It's all a vicious cycle. So we're putting cups on Jesse's back right now, and I'm gonna put them in a, uh, a specific pattern. So that way when we activate his muscles, it's the muscles I want to activate. What I really wanna focus on is um, from here to here all the way through activating all that. Silicone cups on areas where I want to be activated where there's not really too much muscles and I can also put them on bony landmarks. They don't do, they don't have as much suction as uh, these ones do, but you put enough of them on and they get the job done. Plus, I'm working with all the other cups too. Always pop off some. And I just want you to touch your toes right now, Jesse. That's fully, it's lengthening all of this. When you come up, use your knees or use your legs. And stand up straight. And drop everything, relax it, neutral. There you go, again. There you go, pull it, pull it, pull it. There you go, you see all these cups? It's good stuff. So we can do this stretch. We can also have them do the same stretch, but actually reach from side to side, from corner to corner. Um, and it's gonna activate a specific side. So, <clears throat> once we do that, Jesse, I want you to reach with this arm underneath your other arm to that corner over there. And that stretch is straight forward. Again, Jesse. You can have, see how some cups are darker than the others. this I'm just gonna have a move around a little bit
those arms up. I want to see how the shoulder's doing. Catch my spine. Did it pop? Yeah. It always does. Oh, yeah. That's good? Oh, yeah. No pain in the shoulders? No stiff? A little stiff, but nothing crazy. Okay. That's it.